Hi, my name is Wendy Roberts and I'm a registered social worker and a lecturer in social work at Bangor University and I have previously worked on the Effective Child Protection Project in Gwynedd. And my name is Siobhan McLean and I've been a social worker for 33 years. I mostly now do writing and training and I've really enjoyed working with Wendy on the Effective Child Protection Project. And we've done a few videos together before, but we've never been in the same room. So this feels a bit different, doesn't it? We don't That's know whether to look at one another or look at the camera, so we might do bits of both. Um, but we, we wanted to do this short video to explain some of the work that we've been doing around professional curiosity in social work. So I've been uh, 37 years since I started social work training. And so in that 37 year journey, professional curiosity just wasn't something really that was talked about very much at all. And it seems to me to be a more recent phrase. You know, you hear it a lot nowadays. But we also felt, didn't we, that there wasn't really always a clarity around what it was and how it connected to other areas that we've been working on. And we saw it as being really closely connected to reflection. And so, you know, it was really great that the child protection, the Effective Child Protection Project enabled us to have some time and space together to look at what does this actually mean in practice and um so we've been doing some work together to look at that but we started off by thinking what do students do when they're learning about something new so we googled that word professional that phrase professional curiosity and what we found is the same kind of document coming up again and again badged slightly differently but just very similar all kind of through one perspective didn't we in terms of what what we could see that was already out there yeah i think for me what really struck me was that sense that because the word professional curiosity has been used in a lot of inquiries and reviews over the years in terms of um, recommendations or changes that people need to do within the workplace, um, the terminology such as think the unthinkable, um, respectful uncertainty, that it's always kind of linked to this element of risk. Mm. Um, and I think what we were really conscious about was thinking about a way to think about professional curiosity in its entirety. So there is not always through that lens of risk, but actually if we're thinking about professional curiosity every day in our work, it should enable us to be more effective practitioners all of the time. Yes, yeah, it, it is something that's about everything that we do really, isn't it? It's mm -hmm. about how we respond in every situation. I suppose mm -hmm. to me, social work has always been about being curious. You know, generally, social workers are interested in people. Yeah, you know, yeah. we're very, we're curious. We want to find out more. We want to know more. Um, and that's really all about, you know, it's curiosity, isn't it? Curiosity is about wanting to know more and find out things. And I suppose in a way, it's a bit about sort of being nosy, but respectfully nosy and nosy with a purpose. But it's it's about finding out, really. Um, but it, I suppose what we were thinking about was, whilst organizations can help with that you know they can provide time and space and make sure that social workers aren't overworked so that they're almost working on a kind of you know robotic sort of not thinking things through organizations can help with that they can provide really good quality supervision which really helps with professional curiosity i mean even curious supervision you know so they can provide all of that, but ultimately it's the worker, isn't it, that needs to develop those skills. Is it skills? Is it characteristics? Needs to become more professionally curious. So we set about looking at how we could support that, didn't we, and link it back to reflection and some of those other things as well. So. Yeah, I think that link between reflection, analysis, professional curiosity, that they all go hand in hand, really. Um, and what we were really keen to do is think about how we can build that self-awareness because through the self-awareness then you can develop that professional cu curiosity um, and that will help you then when you're doing any kind of work, whether it be the challenging aspects of the complex safeguarding arena or whether it's any kind of assessment that you approach really. Mm. Yeah, because every aspect, as we said earlier, needs to be about being curious. And it is that self-awareness that you're talking about. We really wanted to drill into, didn't we? And when I go back to that, I said in 37 years, you know, years ago in my training, it wasn't really talked about. But what was talked about in my training was the use of self. 
And for us, I think that was really important, wasn't it? How do you use yourself to be more curious? And I remember sharing with you a poem that I actually, we can't attribute it, we can't say where it came from, because it's something that years and years ago, um, I saw up in the wall in a service that I was visiting, um, I was doing a review, and this was a poem up on the wall, and I have it now up on my wall. Um, and so the poem, it said on it, written by a Canadian student with learning disabilities, and that's the only way that I can attribute it. And over the years, I've tried to find out who wrote it, and you can't. But to me, it's a really powerful poem, and it says, to work with me, you have to listen to me. And you can't just listen with your ears, because it'll go to your head too fast. You have to listen with your whole body. And if you listen slow, some of what I say will enter your heart. And I think that's a really powerful poem about the importance of listening, but that use of the whole body. And we were really interested in that, weren't we? How do you listen with your whole body? And maybe that's what professional curiosity is. And so we went from there, really, didn't we? Yeah, and I think it also built upon the fact that when you read around professional curiosity, it says a lot about not taking things at face value. So I think with the idea that came from the poem and the idea of not taking things at face value, we kind of came to that end point, I suppose, of thinking, well, this needs to be a whole body model. Um, and I suppose that's what we've tried to create. Yes, yeah, what we've tried to create. But I think it builds on lots of other things, doesn't it? So in social work, you, we talk a lot about head, heart and hands that comes from social pedagogy and um, you know, I was involved in developing the share model, which looks at what we see and what we hear and the action we take and what we read and how we evaluate it. And that's sort of another model that's about self-awareness and senses. It's about yeah. your sensory information, isn't it? But we wanted to go even further than that and develop this whole body model, didn't we? Um, and so working, we also wanted to present it differently, didn't we? We Yeah. We've been trying, haven't we? We've done some work around reflective practice and trying to show that through the use of animations. So yeah. we decided to go back to that idea and animate a video around the whole body model. And so we hope that you enjoy the model and it helps you to think in a clearer way about what professional curiosity might mean to you. This video will help you to think about whether you are a professionally curious practitioner and guide you to consider various elements that will support you in your practice. It will build on the concept of head, heart and hands, adding other body parts and prompts to help develop your thinking, taking you from the top of your head to the tip of your toes to become more professionally curious. Getting a head start. Professional curiosity doesn't just happen. You need to put thought into what you are doing and why, as this can improve your practice and support you in developing a collaborative working relationship with others. Reflection for action and thinking ahead is very important. In over your head. There may be times where you feel like you are in over your head and you just don't know what to do with the information you are gathering and your thoughts about the situation. There are times where even the most experienced workers might feel out of their depth. Reflection, discussion with colleagues and supervision will help you to explore your feelings and clarify your thinking. Off the top of your head. When responding to a question, if you find yourself starting off with, off the top of my head, you need to think about your professional curiosity and practice in more depth. Nothing should be off the top of your head and everything should be fully thought through. Hair raising issues. What information might make you think, wow, what has shocked or surprised you? Sometimes it can be helpful to think the unthinkable. What is the unthinkable in this situation? Eyes. What have you seen? Sometimes, more importantly, what haven't you seen? Observation skills are highly developed in professionally curious practitioners. Although seeing isn't simply about observation, and our observations aren't simply about what we have seen. What can't you see and why? Or what don't you want to see? Is there anything that you have lost sight of? Do you think you are looking for something in particular? If so, there may be some confirmation bias that you need to think about. Seeing eye to eye. 
When we see eye to eye with someone, it means that we see things in a similar way. In this situation, what are you seeing in a similar way to others? What are you seeing differently? Why? Sometimes we feel more comfortable when we see things in the same way as other people, but this can lead to us missing things at times. All ears. Listening is widely recognised as a key skill in communication with others but sometimes we listen in order to think about what to ask next. Professional curiosity calls for us to be all ears and actively listen. Listening isn't the same as hearing, and this is particularly important for us to think about in relation to professional practice. Ears. What have you heard? What or who haven't you heard? Whose voice is the loudest? Why? How are you making sure that you keep the individual's voice at the centre of your curiosity? There are times in our practice where we might lose focus on the purpose of our work because of what we have heard. For example, you may become focused on the needs of the parents rather than the child because of the complexity of their life or situation. Make sure that you are very clear about why you are hearing what you are hearing. Playing it by ear. Whilst it is important to be intentional in information gathering, it is also vital that you can play it by ear when necessary. Situations can change, and you will need to be flexible in your planning and your thinking. New information might challenge your previous thinking, and you need to be able to adapt and embrace all new information, even when it doesn't fit neatly with what we might already know. Nose. What you smell is often very important. Sometimes people don't want to talk about smells, perhaps thinking it is impolite, but we should always ask about smells. Professional curiosity would include saying something like, that's an unusual smell, what is it? Nosiness. Being nosy is often seen as a negative trait, but actually professional curiosity could be seen as nosiness with good intent. Being clear about why you are asking questions and about effective use of professional authority should remove your fear of being seen as nosy. What is in front of your nose? When we look back in hindsight, we often realise that something was right in front of our nose, but we just didn't see it for some reason. Is there anything that you are missing now that might look obvious later? Mouth. We can use our communication skills to ask direct and sensitive questions, and this can help us to build relationships with people. It is important that we consider what we are being told or what is being discussed, as well as what isn't, as this can give us a different perspective. Are you asking and saying everything you want to? What are you not saying and why? Lips are sealed. Confidentiality is vital in our practice. But this doesn't mean that you never share information with others. Make sure that you have discussed confidentiality with everyone involved and that you are all clear on what might be shared and why. Information sharing is an important aspect of working collaboratively with people, but it is also important to recognise who needs to know what. Like pulling tea. It can feel very difficult to get all of the information you need but clear, kind and consistent communication will help. Empathising with why a person might not want to talk to you is important, but being persistent and seeking out what you need to know is vital. Sticking your neck out. Sometimes professional curiosity can feel like sticking your neck out. Maybe everyone else has a clear view about what they think is going on in a situation. Maybe it seems clear cut, but you feel there is more to explore or perhaps you think that there is some information that doesn't seem to fit or connect. You might need to stick your neck out to promote more curiosity in others. How does it feel to put your neck on the line? Up to your neck in it. Professional practice can be really busy. You might feel absolutely up to your neck in work, and this can impact on professional curiosity. If you see what might be an apparent answer quickly, then it can be tempting to work on that and not look beyond it. How much is the pressure of your other work impacting on your curiosity in this situation? Lump in your throat. 
There may be times that you experience strong emotional reactions to what someone is telling you. We are human beings. It's important, though, that you are careful how you manage it. At times, sharing your emotions can be appropriate and even helpful, but at other times it is not. You may feel disgusted by something that has happened to someone, for example, but if you show this to them, they may feel a sense of shame and may not tell you other things that are important. So, while sharing emotions can be helpful in creating human connections, it can also shut things down. Hold your breath. There could be times when you need to hold your nerve. Perhaps you feel like you are in an exposed situation. At these times, take a deep breath and try to connect with what your body is trying to tell you. Shoulders. What is the information you hold and have you shared it with anyone? Do you feel as though you are shouldering full responsibility here or are you confident about your line of accountability? What impact is this having on your decision making? Crying on your shoulder. Professional practice is emotive and we are continuously assessing and responding to other people's emotions as well as our own. You may be the safe space that a person needs in order to be able to vent their feelings and offload their emotions. It is important to be self-aware, to keep your own feelings in check and to use reflection and supervision or team support when you may feel compassionately exhausted. The long arm of the law. Legal literacy is essential in professional practice. Part of professional curiosity is being clear about the legal framework surrounding your practice. What is the legal basis of your work in the situation? What can the law offer you in terms of what you could do next? Keeping at arm's length. Are there times where you feel that you are not being told everything? or not getting the opportunity to see the whole picture of what is going on. Whilst this can cause concern, there needs to be a clear understanding of the person's situation. Are they keeping you at arm's length as they are scared of the power that they consider you to have over them? Or are they deliberately trying to keep you away from certain information or certain people? And why might this be? Elbow room. What room for manoeuvre do you have in this situation? What freedom do you have in thinking about your responses? Have you come in with a plan already formed? And in what ways is that limiting your responses here? Hands. What is in your hands? What can you do? What can you find out? And what is out of your hands? Do you feel like your hands are tied behind your back in this situation? Why? An old hand at it. The more experienced someone is, the more they may feel that they have seen everything and that nothing can surprise them anymore. Actually, when we are working with people, every single situation is unique and complex. If you are an old hand at something, it can still be really useful to revisit some of the basics every now and again. Getting right back to very basic questions like why can be incredibly useful in being more curious. Crossing your fingers. It's no good just crossing your fingers and hoping for the best in a situation. Being strength-based and hopeful is important, but we must remain realistic and avoid over-optimism. Finding your feet. Sometimes in situations which are new to you, it can be difficult to find your feet as a practitioner. It might be worth thinking about questions like, in what ways is this new for me? What can I draw on from my previous experiences that might help me to find my feet in a situation? Is the fact that I am not yet fully secure with my footing here impacting on my work and understanding? Who or what could help me to feel more secure? Dancing around. Sometimes when we are uncomfortable, we can dance around a point rather than asking a direct question. Clarity and direct but sensitive questioning is always important. Don't dance around an issue. Instead, ask about it. Knee-jerk reaction. What was your first thought about the information you are gathering? And what do you think you should do? Why is that? Kicking yourself. There may be times where you feel that you haven't asked the right questions, or indeed asked questions in the right way. Perhaps you look back and wish you had done some differently. 
Whilst it is always important to think about what we can improve on, it is also important that you are not overly self-critical and you don't kick yourself too often because it hurts. Pulling your leg. People may not always be entirely honest and truthful with you. Using the old saying, they might pull your leg. When you are gathering information, how do you know that the information is valid? There may actually be a number of truths in the situation. How do you recognise and work with that? Itchy feet. The idiom itchy feet means that you want to get away. Is there anything here that you are trying to get away from and why? How do other people feel in that situation? Do they have the opportunity to move on and get away? Cold feet. Another idiom, cold feet refers to having a lack of confidence and a fear of taking action. Sometimes professionals can be worried about addressing particular issues or even talking to particular people. Have you experienced cold feet in this situation? And how has that impacted on your work? Put your foot in it. Sometimes as human beings we say the wrong thing. We put our foot in it and just get it wrong. It might be appropriate to actually say this. Oh, I stuck my foot in it a bit there, didn't I? That honesty can help to show that we are all human, but can also gauge reaction. Do other people involved think that you put your foot in it too? Why? Thinking on your feet. Reflection in action is often described as thinking on your feet. This is essentially about being in the moment and changing your approach as things progress. Do you feel able to be in the moment or are you in a state of constantly thinking ahead? What are you missing if you are not fully connected with your practice and what is unfolding? Drag your feet. Whilst it is important to slow things down, gather all the information you can and reach well-informed decisions, it is also vital that you don't drag your feet in sharing information with others where necessary or in taking action. Drift can be dangerous in social work. Are you dragging your feet here? Why? Toe curling moments. What is making your toes curl? What is making you uneasy in this situation? And why is that? One step at a time. In complex situations, it is important to take things one step at a time. Imagine you are standing. You are stable and balanced. And as you step forward, you temporarily become unbalanced and vulnerable in order to move forwards. Professional curiosity is stepping forward outside of our comfort zones, becoming vulnerable. Often, the first step is the most challenging, but also the most important. What single step do you need to take next in this situation? Heart of the matter. What do you think is at the heart of the matter here? What is the main issue or the main concern? What makes you think that? Sometimes, pausing and really thinking about what it is you are doing and why support you with finding clarity in what can be complex situations. Heart to heart. Are you able to have an open and honest discussion with the other person? If not, why might this be? What barriers are there? When we consider matters of the heart, we often think of emotion and feelings. We need to be able to understand the impact of our emotions on the situation also. If we allow our emotions to lead our actions, then we can lose sight of the best outcomes. But if we emotionally disconnect, then we can also desensitise ourselves, become less empathetic and possibly miss important cues. Butterflies in your tummy. Do you have a flutter in your tummy? Is there something that makes you nervous about the situation or person? Nerves can affect how we present ourselves in practice, as well as affecting our ability to take in information or engage effectively with others. Recognising this is important, as this allows you to then move forward and plan what will make you feel safer or more confident. Tummy sinking moments. What gives you the sinking feeling? There are highs and lows in all aspects of work. And we have to be careful that we don't get stuck on those that are linked to disappointment and upset. Think about the context. Can you look at things from a strengths-based perspective and try and balance your thoughts and feelings? 
Or do you need to investigate further to understand the situation without losing sight of the concern that you may be feeling? Gut instinct. Do you have a strange feeling or sensation deep in your gut? Having a gut instinct about something or someone can make you feel uncomfortable, as it is often linked to uncertainty, and we are not really sure what we can do about it. Being attuned to your senses is a part of being self-aware, and the gut instinct is like an internal alarm that we should always pay attention to. The important thing with listening to your gut is to use support to try and make sense of what you are feeling. How might you be able to evidence your gut feeling and help others to make sense of it? It is important to make sure that we don't just stick to our gut at all costs. That can lead us to only looking for information that backs up our gut, which is the very essence of confirmation bias. But nevertheless, professional gut is important and we need to listen to that gut. The use of these idioms around the human body should have helped you to think about your use of self and how to hone the skills to become more professionally curious in practice. However, we do need to recognise that there are barriers to professional growth and development in this area. Pressures of work, bureaucracy and even self-doubt and imposter syndrome can impact negatively on our ability to be professionally curious. Whilst professional curiosity is about your use of self, you should not be alone in this. Supervision and reflection can support you to make sense of your feelings and dig deeper into the why questions. We hope that as you have thought about using your whole body to be professionally curious, you have recognised the need to evaluate all the information you have and to look towards the information you don't yet have, and never to take anything at face value again.